Hello, everyone. Um, today, we're going to present the improved programmable bootstrapping with larger precision and efficient arithmetic circuit for TFHE. This is a working collaboration between me, Ilaria Chilotti, Damien Liget, uh, Jean Baptiste Orfila, and Samuel Tapp. The four of us today are going to take care of the presentation. So, before we start, uh, let's see a little overview of what we're going to present today. So the presentation is going to be split in five major parts. We're going to start with an um, introduction of the TFHE scheme, an overview of the TFHE scheme. Then we're going to present our improvements, um, which are the PBS mini loot, the BFV product into TFHE, and the WO PBS. And then we're going to finish with some challenges and conclusions. OK, so before we start talking about TFHE, um, let's understand what is the FHE. So FHE stands for fully homomorphic encryption, and it's a new technology allowing to do computations over encrypted data, over encrypted messages. So in the slides, you're going to often see the messages encrypted inside a, a box, this, uh, as instance in this slide, a little blue box with a, um, with a lock on the bottom. This means encryption. And the message is going to be X and Y in this, uh, in this slide. So in practice, what happens in homomorphic encryption is that if we add homomorphically to ciphertext, or if we multiply homomorphically to ciphertext, the result is going to be a new uh, ciphertext encrypting the addition and the multiplication of the original messages, respectively. Um, by combining addition and multiplication, we can possibly evaluate any function. And the type of messages we can treat in homomorphic encryption are various. We can have bits, integers, real messages. So the most annoying part in homomorphic encryption is what we call the, the noise growth. Um, to be more clear, what happens when we encrypt is that we add some little amount of noise, this little randomness that is measured in the slides with, um, with this little thermometer. And when we start, uh, when we encrypt, uh, the noise is very, very small. However, when we start computing uh, homomorphic operations, the noise uh, grows. And uh, when we do additions and linear combination, the noise uh, is, uh, grows a little bit. However, when we do multiplication and nonlinear uh, operations, uh, the noise grows uh, faster. And the problem is that uh, if there is too much noise, and especially if the noise reaches a, a limit, a certain limit that in the slides are gonna be, is going to be um, um, indicated by this horizontal red line in thermometers, then we risk to have an incorrect decryption. Um, Thanks uh, uh, for us. Um, there is a technique called the bootstrapping that allows us to deal with this noise growth problem. And the TFHE, the scheme that we're going to use today, has a bootstrapping. So the bootstrapping of TFHE is very special. Uh, as any bootstrapping, it allows to reduce the noise inside ciphertext. So in particular, it takes in input what we call an LWE ciphertext. We're going to explain um, uh, in a few slides what it is. Um, that is uh, noisy. And uh, uh, by using a bootstrapping key, which is an encryption of the secret key originally used to encrypt the X, it will evaluate a decryption circuit and produce a new ciphertext uh, of the type LWE as well, uh, with less noise inside. So in practice, it refreshes the ciphertext noise. Um, and the bootstrapping of TFHE is even more special because at the same time that it reduces the noise, it's also able to evaluate a lookup table. Um, so uh, the result is not only going to be the same encryption of the same message with less noise, but an encryption of L of, L of X, where L of X is the position corresponding to X, the input, inside the lookup table. So the result is going to be L of X with less noise. So this technique is actually, uh, and in the, in the rest of the slides, we're going to often call um, this technique PBS for programmable bootstrapping. Um, before we try to understand how the bootstrapping work, let's, uh, um, let's check what are the ciphertexts used in TFHE. So first of all, what is an LWE ciphertext? Well, an LWE ciphertext is a tuple AB, where A is a uniformly random vector, and B is equal to the inner product between this uniformly random vector A and the secret key. Um, and then we have an addition of uh, the message rescaled to a certain um, to a certain delta, uh, and the error. So the error is generally a Gaussian error um, uh, sampled with a certain variance, and the variance is going to be indicated in the thermometer. Um, 
the LWE ciphertexts are very nice because they have homomorphic properties, and especially they are homomorphic with respect to the addition and integer multiplication. In TFHE, we not only use the LWE ciphertext, but we use also two other ciphertexts. Uh, the first one is a ring LWE ciphertext, which are homomorphic with respect to the addition and the constant multiplication, and a ring GSW ciphertext, which are homomorphic with respect to addition, constant multiplication, and multiplication as well. So this means that when we have two ring GSW ciphertexts, we can multiply them together, and the result is going to be a ring GSW ciphertext containing the product of the messages. Uh, there is an additional operation in TFHE that is largely used, which is called external product. And it's an operation between a ring GSW ciphertext and a ring LWE ciphertext. Uh, and the result is going to be a ring LWE ciphertext encrypting the product of the messages. OK, so now that we saw um, what are the ciphertexts in TFHE, let's try to understand how the bootstrapping is done. So just to summarize what we said before, we're going to have an LWE ciphertext in input, quite noisy. Uh, we're going to take also in input a lookup table that we want to evaluate, and the bootstrapping key, that in the case of TFHE is a list of ring GSW ciphertext. We're not going to see the details because this is not important for the comprehension of the presentation. Uh, the output, um, as announced before, is going to be again an LWE ciphertext, this time encrypting L of M uh, with less noise. So what, has, what is the operation that we evaluate during bootstrapping? Well, we homomorphically evaluate the decryption algorithm of the LWE um, encryption. And the decryption algorithm consists in two major steps. The first one is the computation of B minus A times S, which uh, by solving the equations I showed, I showed you before, uh, gives us an output delta M plus the error. And the second step is a rescaling and rounding, allowing us to retrieve the message M. So in order to better understand what is coming next, it's important that we, we visualize uh, what is the LWE input, so delta M plus the error. So you can always imagine it as a list of bits where we have the message that is put in the most significant bits and the error that is in the least significant bits. And in this presentation, the message is going um, is gonna to get uh, values between 0 and P minus 1. OK, so um, how does the bootstrapping work? So we have a first step that is called the modulus switching, uh, which is a step of switching from uh, the modulus ZQ, which is the original modulus, ciphertext modulus, and a modulo uh, to N, which means that we are going to select uh, the log to N most significant bits uh, inside this homomorphically of the input. So what happens in practice is that by selecting this 2n um, uh, log 2n most significant bits, um, we're going to uh, preserve the message because the message is in the most significant bits. And if the error is not too big before entering the bootstrapping, then uh, the message will also be preserved after module switching. The second step is a description of the lookup table inside a polynomial uh, V modulo Xn plus one, uh, in which we're going to put uh, some redundancy. So uh, what does it mean? It means that uh, uh, if the vector you're seeing in the slide is uh, um, a vector representing the coefficients of a polynomial modulo Xn plus one, we're going to have uh, uh, multiple repetitions of the elements of the lookup table. So we're going to start with uh, many repetitions of L0, then many repetitions of L1, and so on until LP minus one. And then the third step is going to be a rotation of this uh, polynomial um, of uh, delta M plus error position. Well, delta M plus the error are going to be the result of the modulo switching. So we're not going to check into detail uh, this uh, step. This is performed in TFHE by using a loop of external products. And uh, um, the final result of this operation is a ring LW encryption of the same vector rotated. And uh, the, what happens after the rotation is that the coefficient uh, that were uh, associated to L of M are going to move to the first position of the vector. And then the last step is going to be uh, what we call a sample extraction, which consists in extracting the first element of this uh, polynomial into an LWE ciphertext. And since uh, the first element was uh, L of M, then um, is, we're going to obtain an LWE encryption of L of M with less noise as expected before. Okay, so the TFHE bootstrapping seems a very, a very powerful, actually is a very powerful tool, but unfortunately has some limitations. And the major limitation is due to the fact that we work modulo Xn plus one. 
So in order to be more clear, what happens when we work modulo x n plus one? So we have polynomial of size uh, n of, with n coefficients. And uh, since the rotation um, modulo x n plus one is of order to n, what happens is that uh, it exists a sort of imaginary part of size n as well, which contains exactly the same elements of the first part, the first n elements, but with a minus if sign in front of them. So what happened is the following. So if uh, um, the most significant bit of our message is equal to zero, during the rotation, we're going to find an element inside the first uh, n coefficient, so an element of v, uh, and the result is going to be exactly L of m. However, if uh, in the, the most significant bit of the message is going to be equal to one, after the rotation, the result is going to um, be in the, let's say, imaginary part. And so the result is not going to be L of m, but minus L of m instead. So if we want to always have L of m as a result, uh, we have to know the first the most significant bit of the message. And especially in general, uh, we're going to fix this most significant bit to zero. And we're going to try to keep it equal to zero all the time. And this is actually a, a, a big limitation. So in this paper, what we try to do is to overcome this limitation together with other TFHE limitations. Um, in the rest of the presentation, uh, you're going to see our contribution. So we're going to start with uh, uh, what we call PBS Minilut, which is a, a technique allowing us to evaluate several lookup tables per bootstrapping on the same input. Um, then we're going to see how to use the BFV like multiplication into TFHE to improve the TFHE techniques. And this was especially possible thanks to a tight noise analysis. And finally, we're going to see what we call the wall PBS, which is a PBS without a bit of padding, uh, which is the technique allowing us to overcome the limitation I just described about uh, um, the most significant bit um, set to zero. Uh, so now we are going to have a look on a new method, which is called PBS many loops, and allows us to evaluate many functions into one single PBS. First, we're going to introduce a new tool, which is called generalized bootstrapping, and which will act on the module switching, which is the first step of the bootstrapping. So in the usual bootstrapping, um, the first step requires to shift from a ciphertext, which is encoded over qubits, into a ciphertext, which is only encoded over two m bits, and that the frame we obtain after this module switching contains the most significant bits. So the idea is to add more degrees of freedom to this step. So first, uh, we want to choose the position of the most significant bit, which will be uh, retained after module switching. So uh, for instance, we define a new variable, which is called kappa. And uh, this kappa, in this example, is defined to two. So in this case, after modulus switching, this means that we have shifted from two bits from the, the most significant bits. And so that if our message encrypted was only originally defined as m prime concatenated with m, after the modulus switching, we'll only have the encryption on m since we have shifted from two bits. We can also define a shifting which is negative, so that the kappa is negative. This means that after the module switching, we'll add some random bit as the most significant one uh, in the frame which is retained after the module switching. In this example, we define kappa as minus one. So this means that we want to shift from one bit after the modulus q, so that after the module switching, we'll have random, one random bit as the most significant bit. The second approach is, uh, is about shifting from the right side. But in this case, we'll define what we call a right padding. In this case, the idea is to have some bits that we will ensure to be equal to zero after the module switching. This is defined by the variable theta, and theta will represent the number of bits which are equal to zero after the module switching. So in this example, we define theta as two, so that after the module switching, the two least significant bits are now equal to zero. We can combine with these two approaches so that, in fact, this offers us the possibility to choose the frame which will be module switch. So with the kappa, we shift from kappa bits. And with the theta, we ensure that the last theta bits will be equal to 0, so that the frame of the module switching is now up to our choice. The first application of this uh, generalized bootstrapping will be in the PBS mini loops. So just for recall, in the PBS, normally, uh, we have one PBS for one loot. 
and that at the brand rotation state, we are going to choose the correct case of the LUT, which will be evaluated, meaning that we want to obtain L of M depending on the encryption of the message M. Now, if we apply the general bootstrap by defining just the theta, and theta will be equal to one. This means that we here we represent what we obtain after modulus switch in the plain text version, so that the last bit will be equal to zero, and we are sure of that. This offers more possibilities to encode loops. Now we are able to encode two lookup tables instead of just one as previously. Why is this possible? Because now we can use the value of this list, least significant bit to select which lookup table we wish will be chosen. So for instance, if we say that the least significant bit is equal to zero, we will select the first lookup table, so L0. So that after a sample extract will be obtained a LW ciphertext encrypting L0, L0 of M. If the last bit is now equal to one, then this means that we are going to select the first, the second lookup table so that we obtain the encryption of L1 of M. Another view of the PBS minute is then that using this parameter theta, we are unable to evaluate two to the power of theta function with the cost of only one PBS and the cost of two to the power of theta sample extract. However, the sample extract is almost free, so that the cost of a generalized PBS and the evaluation of many loots is the cost of only one PBS. This offers the multiple instruction single data paradigm to the PBS. These methods have, 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 however, some drawbacks. In fact, we require that the messages are small enough since we are restricting the last bits after the most switching to be equal to zero. And moreover, the more we increase the value of theta, the more we increase the probability of having here or after, after a PBS. So now we're gonna focus on the BFV product in the context of TFHE. So what is the uh, product a la BFV? It's uh, pretty simple. You have two ring LWE ciphertexts as input and you compute a tensor product be between those two. You end up with a larger ciphertext encrypted with a, a bigger secret key. And what they do in BFV, uh, they add this uh, key switch to go back to the original secret key. So in this presentation, we're gonna call the tensor product followed by the key switch ring LWE product. We had to work on the noise formula for this operation in order to prove that it's possible to use it in the TFHE context. In the TFHE context, we have a, a small Q, the, the, the integer modulus for the ciphertext. It means that we cannot have really big amounts of noise. So we had to work on this formula and we did it in a generic way, meaning we can have a, different kind of secret key distributions. It can be binary, ternary, Gaussian, or anything else, as long as you can provide the standard deviation and the mean of the distribution. Um, so we were able to use that ugly formula and prove that we can compute some level multiplication in TFHE. For instance, we, we we can see that with a message precision of four bit, we can have eight levels of multiplication. So uh, to, to use it in TFHE, we have to convert uh, LW ciphertext into ring LW ciphertext. Indeed, in TFHE, we mostly work uh, with messages encrypted as LW ciphertexts. So we're going to use this uh, key switch, converting uh, our input messages M0 and M1 into constant polynomials uh, encrypted in ring LW ciphertext. Then we do the tensor product and key switch. We end up with a ring LW ciphertext encrypting M0 times M1. And to go back to LWE, we simply compute the sample extraction. So now we're gonna see how this uh, uh, BFV product in TFHE can be useful to overcome uh, the negacy click property of the programmable bootstrapping. So we're going to start with this toy example 
we consider a ciphertext and putting this plain text with a zero in the most significant bits and uh, this lookup table L. When we do the regular programmable bootstrapping, we end up with a ciphertext of the message L of M. If now we look at what would happen if there was one in the most significant bits, we end up with minus L of M. And that's, that's exactly what we want to correct. A way to do that is to compute what we call the sign. So we use another lookup table. It's a constant lookup table. And if we go back to this plain text with a zero in the most significant bit, we end up with an encryption of one. If we now look at what happened with a one in the most significant bit, we end up with a minus one. And it's easy to see that if we compute a multiplication between uh, those two, we end up with what we wanted, which is L of M in both cases. So how to build this WAP PBS? We start with a, a, a ciphertext encrypting a, a plain text without any bit of padding. We, we start with pulling a bit, which is random because of the way we encrypt with LWE and we apply the little trick we just showed you. In more details, we're going to see what it is. You start with this uh, ciphertext encrypting a random bit beta followed by your message M. You compute two PBSs, one for the lookup table you want to evaluate and one for the sign. And then you use the LWE multiplication we described and you end up with the desired message L of M. So there are two PBSs to evaluate here. And uh, we see that we can uh, factorize them into one using the CHIM19 trick. But there is a price here. You add a little bit of additional noise. If the message is small enough, you can use our trick PBS Minilute and also evaluate uh, uh, for the price of one PBS only, uh, those two lookup tables. So I'm going to present another way to achieve uh, programmable bootstrapping without padding. So in the version uh, Damien just showed you, we use uh, the RLWE multiplication to correct the sign of uh, the random bit uh, in the MSB of the message. And here we use uh, another technique. So we still have um, an encryption of a message M as input, and we want to obtain uh, the evaluation of a lookup table L uh, with M. So the lookup table L is represented in the bottom left of the screen. And so we, we don't want to work with uh, this huge uh, table. We want to work with lookup table twice uh, as small. So first, we are going to break apart uh, this lookup table into two lookup tables, L0 and L1. Um, so now we are going to see how we can use L0 and L1 uh, to obtain uh, this encryption of L of M. Um, so at the beginning, we have our encryption of the message M. And here we uh, call uh, beta the most significant bit of this message and M prime the rest of uh, the message. If beta is equal uh, to zero and we evaluate uh, the lookup table L0 on M prime, we obtain uh, the evaluation of the lookup table L on M. And if we have uh, beta equals to one, and we evaluate L1 uh, in N prime, we will obtain L, um, the lookup table uh, of M. So now how uh, does this work in FHE? So at the beginning, we have our ciphertext of our message M. We, and at the end, we want uh, to obtain the encryption of uh, the evaluation of the lookup table. So first, we are going to uh, perform the PBS with the first lookup table to obtain uh, the evaluation of our lookup table. 
um, at, at the sign um, up to a sign. We also are going to perform a bootstrap uh, with the sign lookup table uh, as uh, with the first version of the bootstrap without padding and uh, the bootstrapping with the second lookup table. Then we are going to add some offset to the, to the sign and perform an LWE multiplication. And we all we do the same thing for the second lookup table with the sign. And at the end, we are going just to sum everything. So here we use the we use beta, the MSB of the message, to select uh, between L0 and L1, the two lookup tables, and also to correct uh, the sign at the same time. Um, as with the pre, uh, precedent previous version, uh, we have a layer of PBS, so we can use either the uh, SIM19 PBS trick or the PBS menu we just introduced. And we can, as there is um, two multiplication, LWE multiplication, we can use an LWE square, which consists of an LWE multiplication with uh, both input um, that are the same. And the complexity of the LWE square is more or less the same as the one of uh, LWE multiplication. So now we want to compare the complexity of a, a classical uh, PBS and the two versions of the bootstrap without padding we just intro introduced. So we are going to look at uh, PBS working on PBIT uh, message. So for a uh, traditional PBS, you will need a PBS for P plus one uh, bit. So P bit for the message and the plus one is for the zero padding you put in the most significant bit um, of the message. For the first version of the bootstrap without padding, you will need two PBS for P plus one bits. Uh, so the P is for the message and the plus one is for the random padding uh, we added during the module switching. For the second version, oh, sorry, and we also have uh, LWE multiplication. For the second version of the bootstrapping without padding, we need three PBS, but only for P bit because we don't need any padding. And uh, two LWE multiplication and three additions. So we can see that the WAP PBS one seems to be always um, to cost more than a, a, a traditional PBS, but it really depends on the context uh, for uh, the comparison between uh, WAP PBS uh, two and a traditional PBS. Um, what about uh, parallel complexity? How does it uh, compare? So each layer of PBS became just uh, one PBS. And if we have two multiplication, we have one multiplication. So the interesting uh, take on uh, this slide is that the algorithm we introduced are easily parallelizable. And uh, with the help of uh, parallelization, the complexity are quite um, close to the one of a traditional PBS. So now it's the time to conclude this presentation. And to um, so I will begin by, by summing up the contribution we just uh, presented. So first of all, we showed you a BAV-like multiplication in TFHE. Mm -hmm. Then we introduced a way to evaluate several lookup table at once with the PBS menu loot. And finally, we introduced two ways to build a bootstrapping without padding, the so PBS one and the word PBS two. If you look at the, at the paper, you will find more contribution uh, you will find a generic and tight noise analysis of each uh, introduced FHE operators. Uh, you will also find a way to uh, build an efficient circuit bootstrap uh, using the PBS Manilut. You will also find an efficient algorithm to split uh, ciphertext in chunk 
using the web PBS. And using this uh, splitting in chunks, you can uh, easily build a large precision bootstrap. And to finish, we also introduced a, a new approach for get bootstrapping, and we extend it to arithmetic circuits. So finally, I'm going to introduce some open problems that uh, still need to be solved. Uh, so first of all, we need to uh, take a look at the FFT because uh, for the tensor product, we need uh, a high precision FFT. Um, next, we want to uh, experiment with hardware implementation as uh, it will be easy to parallelize everything and to play with the precision inside the FFT. We also want to find alternatives to uh, the bootstrapping with that padding we just showed you because of the noise growth um, in those algorithms. And to finish, we want to improve the LWE to GLWE key switch because as of now, it's a huge part of the complexity uh, of the WOP PBS. Thank you for your uh, listening.